Video family. It's Lori Starkey here. Hope you've had a fantastic couple of days since the last time I saw you. Um, this video that I decided to do is one I'm hoping to do every week. It's going to be to share what I ate this week, what the family ate this week on ketosis. Is just a reminder on keto. Just a reminder, I'm on the keto diet um, and really the keto keto lifestyle. I'm trying to get used to saying that the keto lifestyle. And so we did a ton of new recipes, some that we looked up and used from other people that we'll reference, and some that we tried on our own with just the fantastic ingredients, all the delicious fats that you get to use uh, while doing keto. So I'm gonna preview all of those and I'll just kind of talk through them and let you know what we did. And then if you go to www.loristarkey.com slash week one, you should be able to see all of the recipes to where to link you to the various places we got them. Or if it's one of my recipes, I'll type it up for you too. I'll have that down in the show notes as well, where you can go to actually get these recipes. So sit back and relax. And I hope you totally enjoy seeing all the great recipes we tried and all the fantastical food we ate. So let's get our foodie on. Guys, this first one is a uh, biscuits and gravy recipe, keto style that I did this week. The biscuit recipe makes 12 biscuits total. Um, it's a recipe I got from Christy Denny, who has the blog, thegirlwhoateeverything.com. You're gonna wanna make sure that you go ahead and set your oven to 400 degrees to get started here. You're gonna need eggs, almond flour, butter, baking powder, Himalayan or sea salt, uh, shredded cheddar cheese or shredded cheese of your, of your choosing here, uh, cottage cheese, or you could use sour cream. As you see here, I'm already getting the two tablespoons of butter you're going to need. I use salted Kerrygold, um, and you saw me, I kind of lifted it up and I put a dent in my butter to see like, okay, where's the measurement out? So those, there's the two tablespoons, and voila, don't you wish you were that fast, right? Um, I have magic hands, or maybe just someone who knows how to speed up some editing for us. So you're going to need two bowls. The first one, you're going to go ahead and crack two eggs. I pull my trash can over there just to make life a little more simple and less dirty. I have that rag over there too, as you can see, I use that the entire time and then it'll go in the, in the washing machine as soon as I'm done. Next up is our cottage cheese, or she said you could use sour cream. I did two tablespoons of cottage cheese right into the eggs. Now when you start to whisk this, just understand that the little chunks of cottage cheese are going to stay in there, but that's okay. I mean, we're making biscuits. We're not trying to make smooth yeast rolls. We don't get to have that, right? So. Uh, don't worry about that at all. You just take your, um, oh, and right, there's the butter that we're supposed to add in. So two tablespoons of butter. Oh, look at that cutie. Hello. Anyways, two tablespoons of that melted butter. Grab your wisp. Don't you wish you could go that fast? Man, I'd have carpal tunnel if that was truly what I was up to. But whisk that up really good. Again, you're going to have those chunks of cottage cheese. Please do not freak out over that. Just let them be what they are. Up next, we're gonna get our almond flour. You're gonna need one cup of almond flour, and as you can see here, I've changed bowls, so I'm in a bigger bowl. I'm gonna put my cup of almond flour in there, and I can't get a full cup measuring cup down in there, so I've got a half measuring cup. So I'm gonna just use that and do it twice to get me my full cup of almond flour. Dump it in the bowl. Now there's big chunks in the almond flour, which you'll see here in a minute. I kind of crunch them up a little bit with my whisk, which I took over to the sink and washed with soap and water. Next up, you've got your baking powder, half a teaspoon. That's different than baking soda. Baking soda is the big orange box in your fridge to help with smells. This is baking powder, which is usually kept up um, in a um, spice rack or something like that. So half a teaspoon of baking powder goes into that one cup of almond flour. Now I'm gonna add in my fourth a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, pink salt. And then, like I said, I'm going to kind of just crunch that up. You could totally sift this if you wanted to. But again, because it's biscuits, there's probably no real need for anything like that. I'm looking over there on my phone, obviously, watching the recipe, just making sure I do this right. Grabbing my other cheese that I have. You're going to, um, I'm using um, the Kroger brand, which is my favorite. It's Mexican style blend. You can use any shredded cheese that you want. Totally, completely up to you. I'm gonna make a well right in the middle of the dry ingredients and I'm gonna pour in our wet ingredients and getting all the good stuff out of there. I'm gonna be really careful as I mix this so I don't spill it all over me. Um, it's not so bad with almond flour, regular flour, all-purpose flour would go everywhere. Powdered sugar would be even worse. I'd be covered in it from head to toe. Lovely. 
but um, just take your time whisp it together a little bit once it's completely mixed just make sure you're getting all the way to the bottom get all those bits I have one of those um, I think it's slip mats slip pat um, anyways it's just non-stick it's fantastic but they are kind of expensive I got mine at Sir La Tab and it was a little too much money so I only have one you do not have to use that so right now I'm just putting in my shredded Mexican blend and I have a third of a cup measuring cup is why you saw me do it three times but it, it really is just one cup I'm flipping around and not using my wisp anymore because the cheese is getting stuck I'm just gonna go to a regular spatula and you can almost fold it it'd be easier to fold it than it would be to try to mix it which is what you'll see me go to I figured this out because I can learn as I go so back to that mat you can either use that or you can use um, some sort of Pam or spray you could use butter uh, on the pan to make sure that nothing sticks or you could use some cooking oil it just depends on what your what your choice is on that that's completely up to you what you want to use on your pan to make sure your biscuits actually come up oh there's GP grandpappy um, my first granddaughter will call him <laughs> welcome to my world He's a lot of fun. I'm very, very grateful for my world. So um, you're gonna see, I'm gonna start spooning these out and I'm gonna use just a regular tablespoon. I'm not using a measuring tablespoon. I'm using just one of the big spoons that you would put on your table if you were you know, serving people. Uh, it will make 12 equal biscuits. Some got more attention than others, which is what you'll see here in a second. So with any that you have left in your bowl, you can just go back and see where you shafted one of the biscuits and give him a little bit more to kind of make them all equal. It doesn't matter um, unless you're OCD and want to get them perfect. And then I would probably weigh it or something like that. Uh, but otherwise, <clears throat> they're biscuits. They're okay looking different. So just put them in. You don't mash them down or anything. And this is the final product right before they go in the oven. There was a butter glaze on the recipe too that you'll see. I didn't include that because my biscuits have one purpose. They're going to be smothered in gravy. Don't forget we had set the oven for 400 degrees and you're going to cook these bad boys until they're light and fluffy and brown, but I always like numbers. So 12 to 14 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 12 to 14 minutes and I am an accountant, recovering accountant, so 13 minutes will work for me. Next up, we have the sausage gravy that goes with these. The sausage gravy makes six servings. You're gonna wanna get one pound of Jimmy Dean's ground pork sausage you can get any sausage you want actually and you could even do this with hamburger meat if you want but you want about a pound you could do a little more totally up to you <clears throat> but I love Jimmy Dean it's got a great flavor um, and I just get the regular so there's not too much sage or anything else in it so I just chop that up really good I've got a medium high heat maybe a six or seven on my stove you can see I have a, a gas burner though so I can turn it up and we get going pretty quickly um, so just Take your time on that and let that completely get browned. You don't want any pink at all. I uh, love how I'm s smiling at you guys. I can't help it. I wish we could see each other face to face. Um, so here I'm just showing you the biscuits. They're about halfway through their cook time. And I've started making the gravy like I showed you the minute I put the biscuits in the oven, which was perfect timing for everything to get done about the same time. You're also gonna need heavy whipping cream, Lowry sea salt, or you can use regular salt if you want. Um, xanthan gum, cream cheese, chicken or beef broth I used chicken I felt like it didn't have as strong of a flavor um, so I just made a hole right in the middle of my sausage once it was done and I left all the grease in there by the way just so we could get some of those good healthy animal fats in for this dish you can see I'm just moving it around trying to get the cream cheese to melt and you just got to give it some time and be patient which I'm not so now I start actually smushing it next up you're going to want to add your chicken broth or beef broth you're going to add one cup right to the pan this is the most simple fantastical recipe that's right to the pan next up we're adding two cups we as in me myself and i are adding two cups of heavy cream right to the pan again i'm at a five six seven medium high heat i'm going to add my lowry's sea salt seasoning salt you can add himalayan pink salt or sea salt if you want instead i'm doing one teaspoon so I've got a half a teaspoon measurement tool there and I am just doing two of those. Fits into the bottle better. 
And then xanthan gum is fantastic for baking, but it's also great for stuff like this. It's just a thickener that we can use while we're on keto. And I put in a fourth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Here's our beautiful biscuits out of the oven. Fantastical. The bottoms didn't get as done as I wanted, but that's because I used that, um, that sheet underneath them. So you just cut each one open. They're not as fluffy as a normal biscuit, but that's okay. Like we take what we can get. This gravy is going to be so good. You could eat it on a shoe. So it, it doesn't matter what you put under it. It just makes you feel a little better to know that it's got some something under it. So look at this nice and thick. That gravy will thicken up if you just let it sit on the stove. So if yours is thin, stir it good and walk away for a few minutes and come back and it's going to be super thick. Between the xanthan gum and the cream cheese, it has no choice but to get really, really thick. I'm adding some fresh cracked pepper, which I add to everything. And there we go, delicious. Next up is the cheesy asparagus that we made as a side dish. I wanted a really nice side for us and I found this Keto Made Easy magazine in the grocery store and I was like, mm, there's several things in there that I would actually try. So there's the cheesy asparagus on page 57 for you. You're gonna need asparagus, heavy cream, garlic cloves that have been minced, kosher salt or whatever salt you want to use, black pepper, grated parmesan, mozzarella or another cheese, and optional red pepper flakes. So you can see me there, I've got a nine by 13 dish and I'm putting in three fourths of a cup of heavy cream. So that's a fourth of a cup uh, measuring cup, three fourths of a cup of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, and then for the garlic, I don't like mincing garlic. I used to do it all the time, but now I just get this fantastic already minced garlic and just squeeze it right out of the container. Um, it's always near your vegetables in your grocery store. So there should be some somewhere and it's delicious. It stays in the door of my fridge. It's three cloves, which is basically three squeezes. So I'm just gonna squeeze that out and save myself the um, having to, to do that myself, with the, to have to do the garlic myself, excuse me. Um, and then you just mix it up so you don't get a big old bite of garlic somewhere in there. Next up, I'm gonna get my Parmesan, grated Parmesan cheese. It's one cup of, and it's a shredded. So you could do the powdery stuff too if you want, if that's what you have on hand, no problem. Or you could do Romano or Asiago cheese. Um, it's one full cup. Just know it needs to be a hard cheese for this one. I'm having issues with whether to put the pour it in or what to do, because uh, the cheese dish is obviously a whole lot bigger than my cup, but I figured it out. Just use your fingers. Okay, so I'm just spreading it around trying to make sure everything's kind of even and I'll mix it here in a few minutes to make sure that it really is even. Next up is your cheese of choice. It, the recipe itself calls for one cup of shredded mozzarella, but I use that same Mexican blend from Kroger's that I love so much. Um, and again, kind of just figuring out, okay, how to not get cheese everywhere, which I guess is part of the fun. So I'm just getting that together. One cup of shredded cheese of your choice. And if you shred it yourself, you're going to save yourself some carbs. I just don't have time. So I just back off on other things so I can have shredded cheese ready to go in the fridge. I ain't got no shame in my game. But I did spill cheese, obviously. Um, adding that same fresh ground pepper or cracked pepper that I love adding to all of my stuff. And here's some salt, because nothing had salt really in it yet. So we've got Himalayan pink sea salt in our grinder. Just putting some of that. We like our food nice and salty. And of course you're trying to get in those electrolytes too. Don't forget about that if you're on the keto lifestyle. You're losing sodium and magnesium and potassium. So salt your food to taste, um, which is kind of what your body's telling you anyway. Uh, when it says, hey, I want more salt or I don't want as much salt. It's saying, hey, give me some more, I need it. Um, as you can see here, I'm just starting to mix everything up. And after everything's mixed, the cheese just kind of sucks up what little bit of liquid was in there from that cream. Um, but I'm just doing my best to kind of move it all the way around. Now I'll tell you what, if I was to do this again, I would definitely make, mix that in a bowl and then I would pour it over the asparagus. Um, and you'll see why here in a minute and hopefully get a good laugh out of this. But with asparagus, if you haven't had it before, you can take the stalk and you can bend it and wherever it snaps pretty close to the end of the, the, the meeting of the green and the white, uh, white slash purple, that's where it's supposed to break. Um, and you just eat the top and throw the bottom away. But um, I'm super symmetrical from being a CPA for so long and so I just cut mine because if you snap it it usually has this ugly little piece at the end and well I don't know I don't know who I'm trying to impress but I'll just go ahead and cut mine and save myself all of the breaking of the stalks hello good to see you talking to myself 
Y'all don't mind me, okay? So we're going to go through this. I um, did not like asparagus when I was in my 20s, but as I was going through my 30s and now I'm in my early 40s, I, um, I've, I love trying all kinds of vegetables in different ways, and I have come to love it. I can't stand it in real thick stalks, but I can definitely do it in thin stalks. So I try to get the thinnest ones I can, and if I find thick ones and that's all I got, I'll usually slice them lengthwise to get them cut in half. Um, like I said, lengthwise, just so it's not so much. They have a really unique flavor, uh, but they're delicious. And I'll normally we'll saute them, chop them up in little bites, and saute them with olive oil and garlic salt. But trying this recipe, I knew the family would be excited to have them in a different way. This was super new to us. So now it's time to kind of toss everything together. So I got my handy tongs out and started tossing this. And as you can see, it's a bit of a struggle. Obviously, the cheese and everything are kind of uh, thick at this point, and they don't want to play well with the asparagus. So I did my best, but again, if I had to do this over again or when I do it over again, I'll definitely make sure I just pour this over the top instead of having to find, um, play find the cheese, like some sort of a uh, treasure hunt here to get the goods on top. Because you don't want it to be on the bottom and then it doesn't cover the asparagus. Then you would just have a hell of a mess to clean up rather than getting to enjoy cheesy asparagus, which is the name of the dish. Um, my husband and I each ate a third of this, so this, for me, made three servings. For you, it may make quite a few more. It says it makes six via the recipe, but uh, you'll see how much is on my plate here in a minute. And for us, it made three, so keep that in mind. I'm going to, on my website at loristarkey.com, it'll have this listed out for you in case you don't have the magazine or can't find it or any of that stuff and still want the recipe. I'll just reference the magazine, but I'll list it all out for you and I'll put it as three servings. But again, you can do the math if you need it to be six servings, which is what they call for. My daughter ate the leftovers. So I ate a third of this, Jacob ate a third of this. And then Allison, my middle kiddo, who's on keto with me, took home the other third. I don't know how it turned out with the reheat, but it really just looked like some sort of cheese dip. Uh, that had some green stalks in it. You're going to see how nice and bubbly um, it gets. It just gets super creamy while it's in the oven. And I'm sure I already said this, but the oven is 400 degrees. So if I didn't take a minute from um, moving this stuff around and get your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And here's what it looks like before it goes in. It's going to bake until the cheese is golden and melty and the asparagus is tender, but it's not like anybody's taking a, a bite out of that to check. So how about 25 to 30 minutes? 25 to 30 minutes is what I did. I probably did 27.5 because I love um, averages. So you can see the cheese is bubbling up everywhere. It looks fantastically delicious. It was delicious. The asparagus may be just a little overcooked, but I like it that way. Like I don't really want to crunch in my asparagus. Other vegetables? Okay but not asparagus. So you'll see me take a third and then I'll get us some cheese, but you can see kind of how limp it is. Um, so the ham, the ham is already cooked ham. It's in the, not the deli section, but it was actually like in right next to the meat section where the cooked hams and the cooked turkeys and things like that, that um, are in my grocery store. And so I always get one. I usually have one once a week. And that way when we need it, we can just grab some pre, uh, pre-cooked slices and they can go in the microwave for 15 to 20 seconds. And then I'll usually do up the meal a little bit with a, um, a dish like this, like something fun for the sides. Or we'll do a really cool appetizer or salad or something to start it off. Now I'm just scraping the pan over there trying to get all the goodies that still hit out under the asparagus as it cooked and spreading it out. I think it, the pan itself looked really pretty. This may not be the most beautiful thing, but I think if you had it for uh, your dinner guests, they would definitely love the flavor. It was fantastic. Yep, hope you love it. What a week of cooking. Like all these great recipes, we had such a good time doing it. Um, I had different family members in the kitchen with me. It was just super fun. So I hope you enjoyed all of them. If you if you like what we're up to, um, if you like what I'm up to, I mean, I got a lot of people helping me in the background, but if you want more of it, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Totally up to you. It'll just let you know. Um, it'll let you be part of the family, obviously. And then also, if you want to hit the notification bell right next to it, it'll let you know when we upload new videos and new recipes, uh, share with the journey each week that we do. So love to have you on it with me. Love to encourage you and be encouraged by you. If you have a great recipe that's keto friendly, I would love for you to drop it below. I'll try it. I'll video it. We'll all taste it and have a party with you. So for now, have a great rest of the week. And thanks so much for joining me for what we ate this week and the recipes we tried. See you later.